All right, we're up here on the second morning of our super beefy staircase, the mega style. So we're doing one that's twice as long as we just finished for the first platform. Jay's over there right now getting all of our treads ready for us to bring down to the mill and get all of our tenons cut on it. Now I've been spending a lot of time, and what you should too, and I feel comfortable about my layout. But here, so this is what the layout is. I've got where the treads are gonna end. These are all the pockets that we do need to make. Um, now I showed you this side here is because two sides of this stringer is gonna be up against the building or one of the posts so the tab can't come through. So we're not gonna punch through. The rest of them will be brought all the way through. And I just wanted to show you how once you've got your tread, there's your nose to your tread laid out. I use everything off the front one here to check. But my front tread layout here, I know where the end of my pocket is going to be. So really, I know the center because I've been marking these all day. So in simple terms, just get the center of where you need to make your pocket. Take your 10 and gauge. I'm just drawing line. So there's our center. Now you know I've got the marks on mine for my tenon gauge is already centered. Just line it up. I found that to be the easiest way to do my pockets that keep them tight because my pencil is actually making this a little bit smaller. So it's making the pocket just a hair tight. And I like to keep my stuff a little bit tight. So that's it. We're going to get Jay over here with the mortiser right after he finishes cutting those steps. And we're going to start plunging holes. I have a whole nother stringer that needs to be marked. So we've got a big day. So just make sure, take your time, check your measurements, go back, check them again. Use your square. Use your ruler. Once you're confident, you can start cutting. But this kind of construction has got no give. You can't be a quarter inch off. It has to be cut directly tight. So, mark out, double check. Okay, we're down here on the mill and I'm actually making the tabs. These are actually the tenons for all of the steps that we're making. As I've showed you before, we use our mill, which creates a perfect, perfect cut for us. So what I do is I go around, there's my steps, I cut my scribes into it, what has to, what has to be cut out. So there's part of my tenon. So, okay, so the only cuts that I make with a saw up here on the table are these deep shoulder cuts. It's easier for me to stack them all up here at once, clip them on. I'm on my last three, so we'll just run through them. come down two and seven eighths is what I want I should be right around nine there I am at eight and seven eighths so just under nine still hand cranking that's it So I'm actually cutting three beams at once while people are using their skill saw. 
making two, three cuts each time. So even if I have a slight discrepancy in height, like this one's an eighth of an inch smaller. By cutting it with my saw, measuring it out, you are not going to have any discrepancy in your tab. So it just makes it real easy. We'll get this side when we flip everything around. But this is the hard part. Multitasking right now. Jay's up on the table getting the plunges in. I need to get this moved forward. Not the boards, this project. I'm trying to get it complete within four days. And it's not a little project. All I do is line everybody back up. Line them up. Check. Clamp holds everybody in place. me every day this is a check I'm gonna mark six inches it's just one smidge high eight and seven eighths Go up one. Perfect six. Show you better this way. Your tabs are perfect. You know it. So I'm gonna flip these around. Do this again. I always err on caution and go a smidge bigger. I should have been right in my hole though. We're just sanding it. If you pay attention, you don't even need any chisel work. It's just perfectly square. Starting to get a block build up in there. You can see in the last half hour how many blocks I've cut out of here. They're not the ones being cut, so. Two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths. Perfect. Just a smidge under six. Back to our two. Back to our two. Oh. Mark. Same one. It'll be the same every time.
Check your gauge. I got to keep reminding Jay. Look, we're right. Perfect. Perfect. The numbers are staying perfect. Okay. Off she goes. Just roll down another one. And then we're just back at it. Perfect for us to sand. Perfect. I use the same exact technique when I'm building my knee braces, when I'm doing shoulders, when I'm doing anything, do it on my mill. Makes it 10 times easier, more accurate. She's just a little snug. Nothing, a hair bit of sand ain't gonna do. My mind, perfect. Okay, as I was actually marking up the other beam, Jay thinks I'm talking to him and I'm talking to you guys. He's up there uh, mortising our holes. You see, we had to come up with a different way to rig our mortiser on here. So we were able to clamp it on here. We just lined our piece up to our face guide there. It seemed to work out. We got really, really square pockets going on. Now I've already marked out and married this beam to this beam. So as soon as he's finished plunging the holes in over here, he's going to get to this, and I'm going to start fitting the treads in. But there you go. As you see, it's taken me a couple of hours to mark out these two beams. I've checked, double checked, and I did find some little things that I needed to go back and fix. I was a quarter inch off from one of my measurements and by back checking my last beam, I was able to catch the mistake before we drill. We are humans, there's always gonna be that human error of mistakes. That's why you check and double check. I don't know how to keep saying that. These beams are not something you're gonna throw away like a two by four, but we're working it. Okay, so we've gotten our treads off the mill. Usually I just give them a real quick sand. that quick could make it much easier for the slip into your pocket. Now I haven't cleaned up anything here. This is how my man Jay has left my stuff, which is beautiful. I'm crawling across it because I'm noticing that I don't have a lot of chisel work to do. Cause he took his time, he followed my marks and this thing's gonna go together smoothly. So that's really all I do. Now we're still gonna round this off, round this off, um, show you how the tab works, but we just wanna make sure that everything's gonna fit snugly. So I haven't even ran anything through here. Okay, so on the outside here of the beam, I've actually, we're having the six inch tabs that you see, but I'm just short here. Because on the outside, what I did is we mortised it short so I can chisel it in perfect to fit tight here. We didn't want a big wide open gap. So it's a little bit more handwork, um, but the result comes out great. 
I just wanted to show you here the pocket and the outside of what this is the most important piece that everybody's gonna see the whole entire other side here it's gonna get uh, routed in and so if there's a little imperfection there it will be hidden but right there people are gonna see it forever comment about it so I'm gonna spend a little extra time and get her done right You see, I'm talking milliskickets. This is how tight we're trying to make this. Milliskickets. I'm just going to clean up a couple of the little. Now, like I say before. Here's a dry fit. First one. Let's see if we even get it in. Okay. Snugs here on the side. The pocket itself looks good. It's just the length of our side here. Holy shamoly. That one's bigger than the other staircase. Who? So I'm going to clean out one pocket here for you, how I do it. Just that little bit right there, we'll be able to hang this big beam up. Now I haven't even put a piece of sandpaper, anything on this, but... That's how we know the pocket's right. That's my inch and a half chisel. It's barely sitting in there. I'd rather take wood out. We can't add it. We can't add it. But I'm gonna do which is gonna help us out. See that, fellas? How that just fell right into place. The pocket's tight. We've got to be pinched on this side here because it's keeping me raised up, which I can see right there. I need to come up, flip it over, clean that out one hair. Good luck. First pocket in. Perfect. Wind up perfect with our line. There's our tread line. Measured a thousand times. How many times, Jay? A thousand and one, Dan. You see, he even checked That's me. <laughs> All right, we are at the end of day two. And Big J here has been battling the holes almost all day. He is going to win this. He's on his last. He's got two little guys left. Since then, we were able to cut all the treads, make all the tabs. I've already dry fitted the backside ready to be scribed. So as far as we're going, pretty good day. <laughs>